and uh, we are starting our live stream over on um, Facebook live this morning as well um, video is starting up and we hope everything's going well for you today uh, God is absolutely good we are we are in uh, beginning a um, a new um, unit here the quarter at a glance we just finished we just finished the um, um, unit one leaders set worship examples that was September the 1st through September the 22nd and uh, we are beginning unit three of the quarter at a glance unit three songs of the Old Testament um, we look at various songs that Israel uh, used in worship and prayer while we may not know the melody of their songs, we can get a sense of the mood embedded in the lyrics and what they felt in the presence of God and God's power and goodness. Uh, we begin with Lesson 5, uh, the deliverance of Israel from Pharaoh at the uh, Red Sea and the song Miriam um, led the songs. Um, and then we go to Lesson 6. As be uh, songs uh, 51, usually regarded as David's prayer of uh, confession following his adultery with Bathsheba and the slaying of her husband Uriah. Um, these uh, there are one, two, three, four, five uh, lessons in uh, unit number two, which we're going to be beginning today. Unit number two, which we begin today, uh, September 29th through October the 21st that'd be September the 29th through October the 21st um, and we hope that you will be following along with us um, we want to thank all of you all that are listening and sharing the Sunday school lesson we tagged a number of people this morning and we hope uh, everything is going well with you because God is absolutely good let us pray our Father and Savior Jesus Christ we thank you, Jesus, for the lessons and what you are giving us and the wisdom that you're storing in on us to teach the lessons. Be with us and guide us, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus, for all that we incur here on earth. We thank you, Jesus, for the situations that's going on in the world. You're working out your, our soul salvation as we are working out our soul salvation here on earth. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you for the political situation. It's still in your hand. You're still the sovereign over all things, all nations, and all human beings, all political people. We thank you, Jesus, for pastors, especially Reverend Oliver and our First Lady, Sister Joyce, all, all of the folks at Antioch and his sister church over in uh, Lily Baptist and all of the church doors that are open. We thank you, Jesus, for all the things that you are doing in our lives. Be with us and guide us. Give us the strength to continue to do what we are supposed to do as Christians, Jesus, in spite of our iniquity. You love us regardless. You sent down your son, Jesus, to 42 generations, Jesus, and he sits at the right hand of you waiting to hear us call on you simply by saying, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thou is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. And I'm especially thankful, Jesus, for my family and all of those that are in and around me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. These men are blessed with us in our son Jesus' name. Amen. Again, good morning. Welcome to the um, to the lesson. Um, the lesson is uh, uh, September the fifth. This is the fall quarter of twenty twenty four. Unit two, Songs of the Old Testament. Lesson five, September the 29th, twenty twenty four. 
And um, devotional reading will come out of uh, Psalms 104, verses 1 through 9. The background scripture is going to come out of Exodus. going to come out of Exodus, the 14th chapter, uh, 21 through 31. And um, Exodus, the 15th chapter, verse 121. We are going to uh, um, go over to... Uh, uh, our radio station uh, sound uh, control. I forgot to turn it on this morning because we have we usually record our Sunday school lesson and then we upload it uh, to our Block Talk Radio and for other platforms that we share. Also, remember um, the lesson is also uh, sent to uh, YouTube. There is a, a approximately um, over uh, 75 or 80 lessons for you to follow. And uh, if you miss one, you can always go back and uh, check it again over on uh, YouTube as we uh, prepare to go to um, uh, uh, our radio stream to go live with that so that you can, uh, you can, you can, um, you can hear that. It'll take a minute for it to, uh, to uh, upload and we thank you all for your patience this morning we're just six minutes into the lesson and um, we have a great lesson today uh, I was thinking about this lesson and when I read it and and then you and you think about how we are here on the earth always want to party and do different things like that and, and but then when I saw the lesson time to party um, I um, was immediately focused on what some of the world situations are and uh, what people be doing, how to be partying all the time. But this type of party that they are talking about is a celebration for what God did for the children of Israel. And this also reminds us of a celebration of what, of what uh, um, um, we go through in our life and we accomplish some tasks and we celebrate it. Say, for instance, for a graduation, uh, a, a child is born, or uh, a baptism, uh, any of those things of that nature uh, um, that you uh, uh, go through and uh, you, you want to celebrate for what God has done for you. And uh, we want to say good morning to Miss Snow this morning. We're starting a little late this morning, Miss Snow, but... Um, um, uh, thank you for uh, following us and and, and, and and taking a part in the Sunday School lesson. If it's a blessing for you, uh, please share um, because it's important that whatever God bless us with, we in turn um, you know, share it with others as well. We are uploading and getting ready to... Um, live we were already live but we had to get our <clears throat> sound corrected so that we can upload the Sunday school lesson to our uh, block radio okay we are live now over on uh, blog talk radio and uh, in the studio and uh, we will go there now all right we're already set guys and thank you again we're gonna go <clears throat> give the subject and information again for you all right, this is the fall quarter 2024, Unit 2, Songs of the Old Testament. This will be Lesson 5, September the 29th, 2024. Devotional reading will come out of Psalms 104, um, 1 through 9. Uh, the background scripture will come out of Exodus, the 14th chapter, verses 21 through 31. The 15th chapter, verses 1 through 21. The print passage that comes out of Exodus, the 15th chapter, which is 1 through 3, 11 through 13th verse, the 17th and 18th verse, and the 20th to the 21st verse. All right, now what is our key verse for today? All right, the key verse is very important. And here is why it's so important, because we are singing songs, songs out of the Bible that David wrote about celebration. They are celebrating coming out of Egypt. Uh, uh, the, they had this Pharaoh and his army behind them, and they had uh, the Red Sea in front of them. And, and God opened up the sea, 
told Moses to raise that rod and he parted the water and the water stood on the right and the left hand side and they went through on dry land and they went through on dry land and those soldiers, Egypt, uh, they followed them into the water down in the sea and the God told them to let that water come back together and come back and drown them all. When they got across, they were singing a song celebrating their victory over Pharaoh, drowning their enemies in the sea. That was a momentous uh, miracle there, saving the children, God saving his people from Pharaoh as they was escaping Egypt out of slavery. That's what they were saying. That's why he said this, this lesson, this time to party. And that, that key verse says, Marion, the prophetess, the sister of Aaron, took a temple and her hand, and all the women went out after her with timbers and with dancing. They were dancing and singing. Congratulations. What a party that was. The victory over your enemy. That's a time to celebrate when God bring you over victory over your, over your, over your enemy. Good morning, Mr. Belcher. Thank you for joining us this morning. All right. What is the, the aim of this lesson? What is the aim of this lesson? As a result of experiencing this lesson, the participants should be able to do the following. Trace the historical elements within Moses and Marion celebrated songs of praise. Songs of praise, celebrating the victory over Pharaoh. All right. Number two, keep faith, whether facing difficult situation or celebrating the victory. And here's the thing about it. Yesterday uh, at the Sunderham Bethlehem uh, Baptist District Association uh, uh, con conference and meeting, the, the, uh, Brother Henderson was our teacher and uh, from down there at Morningstar. And it, it was talking about... Uh, 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 um, some of the same things that we were talking today. They focus on this same lesson right here. And, and the question was asked about what what can you do uh, in, in honor of, of God's faithfulness and trust and his love? What you can do, you praise God in good times as well as bad times. In difficult situations or celebrated situations, you praise God all the time, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. He woke you up this morning. He started you on your way. He does so much for us, you can't, you can't number the things that God does for you. All right. The third thing that we're going to be looking at to learn from this lesson, create a timeline noting God's answer to prayers across the history of the local church. Think about your church. Think about the Christian church from the beginning, the things that God did and how he nurtured and, and, and brought that church to where it is today. And guess where that church is? Church is not the building. It's in your heart. All right, here's some key terms for today. Habitation is a Hebrew word. Uh, dwelling regarding God who has no physical residence but is everywhere. You know, he's he, he, he hears everything. He knows everything. He's everywhere. He's in everything. That's awesome. His presence filling all things. His home is his people, and the blood-cleared heart is his permanent dwelling. That's inside our heart, okay? Uh, inheritance, all right? Possession, property, heritage, gift, portion. It derives from the root word uh, uh, material, which means inheritance, but it is Semitic root, it is the word from a stream flowing downward that is what an inheritance is, the Father's wealth flowing down to the next generation. God, Jesus, is coming down, flowing to us in Christians as being we are inherited. We are following Jesus Christ through faith, through trust in Jesus Christ. All in all, he is our all in all. All right, men of war, man of war. The word is warrior, able to deal with all those that strive with their maker. In other words, you have a warrior in Jesus Christ, God Almighty, our creator. Awesome, can do anything. He do not lose battles. Scholarly renders the Latin uh, word as a translation of the same phrase. Jehovah is a strong warrior, almighty in war. 
All right. Another word is redeem. It's a Hebrew word. Purchased and ransomed from slavery. Acted as a kinsman. Bought back. Claimed. Jesus Christ came down through 42 generations. God sent his son down to the redeemer so that we can get back because we lost it in the, in, in the Garden of Eden with uh, Satan, the deceiver, the liar through Adam and Eve. All right, let's take a quick look at why does this lesson matter. Again, thank for all that are with us today. Joint, please share if God willing. Why does this lesson matter? This is in relationship to what takes place in your real life. Why does it matter? People enjoy finding opportunities to celebrate. And here's the thing about that. What ways can we celebrate the victory in our lives? In our lives, Moses and Miriam led the people with praises and songs for God's victory in the lives of Israelites. What's happening in your life that you be singing songs of praise to God for, for what he did in your life? What a wonderful thing that is to sing songs of praise to God in celebration of what he has did in your life. All right. The lesson in focus. Let's take a look at that. Let's take a look at some historical information. Singing and our tra tradition, singing your troubles away, singing your trials and tribulations away. Listen to this. Ruby Bridge is a young African-American girl became a symbol of courage during the Civil War. I'm sorry, during the Civil Rights. I said Civil War, but the Civil Rights, okay? Uh, movement in the 60s. At just six years old, Ruby was selected to attend an all-white elementary school in New Orleans, Louisiana, as part of the integration process. Despite facing, despite facing threats protests, and racial slurs, Ruby furiously walked through the doors of William French Elementary School. Her daily journey to school was marked with verbal abuse, hostility from angry crowds who gathered to protest against her attendance. However, with federal marshals escorting her, Ruby remained determined to receive an education and break down racial barriers. All right? Her faith sustained her during these difficult times, and she sang hymns quietly to herself as she walked past the angry mob. I'm reminded of Sunday school on Revival Day, and Reverend Oliver was talking about what, what when he's going through trials and tribulation and trouble things on his mind, and the songs that he sang, Jesus Keep Me Near the Cross. That is the song that my father sang when he was in trouble. Whenever I hear him sing that song, I knew he was in trouble some way in the world, some kind of way. And he was soliciting and encouraging himself to sing it. Jesus, keep me near the cross. Jesus, keep me near thy cross. There. Oh, oh, what a song. It gets me emotionally when I think about how to hear my father sing that song. All right. African-American churches rallied around Ruby, organized prayers and vigils and lifting their voices and song. They were praying for this child, this six-year-old child, being abused as she is trying to go to school, trying to bring down racial barriers of segregation in the United States. All right. Choir songs, anthems of hope, celebrating Ruby's bravery and praying for justice. One song, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Oh, talking about Ruby's little light. That's, the lyrics spoke of courage, determination, and an unwavering light within each person. You have that light in you that keeps you going on. Um, music united the community and became a powerful weapon against hatred and fear. Ruby felt the collective strength of those singing alongside her as she walked. Music transcends music transcends adversity and become a symbol of hope and unity. Let's remember that music is worship transcends adversity. Make a note of that. Music is worship transcends adversity. Just as Moses and Miriam led the Israelites in song, 
let our voices rise to some victories echoing throughout the ages. I ain't going to let nobody turn me around. Look at that. Even in, in the front of the gunshots and assassinations and killings and all the kind of thing. The same thing with the vote today. There's so much stuff being coming out and people talking and saying different things about the, the election coming up. But here's the thing about that. It's your duty to go out and vote. Whether you're black, white, revolt, Republican, Democrat, whatever it is. It's your responsibility to be about your civic duty, knowing what you are supposed to do. It is your responsibility to do it. Exercise that right. Go out and vote. Make that choice yours. God gave you that ability to choose, and you choose who you want to represent to you as a nation. Think about that. Pray about it and ask God to guide you and do what God asks you to do. Go out and vote. All right. The lesson in context. What is the culture and what's taking place around this situation? What is going on here? What What is this lesson in context about here? Exodus 14, 21 uh, through uh, uh, um, I'm going to say Exodus 14, chapter 21 and 5th chapter, verses 21 is a crucial passage in the biblical account of the Israelite escape from Egypt. After 10 plagues, now 10 plagues, uh, Pharaoh reluctantly allowed the Israelites to leave Egypt. God led them to the camp by the Red Sea. Seemingly trapped between the wilderness and the sea, Pharaoh's heart hardened again and he decided to pursue Israel with chariots and the army. God orchestrated this situation to demonstrate his power and, 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 and gain honor over Pharaoh. This is in Exodus, the 14th chapter, verses 1 through 9. Exodus, the 14th chapter, verses 1 through 9. As the Israelites stood at the water edge, Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. The Lord caused a strong east wind to blow all night, all night, miraculously dividing the waters. The sea became dry land, and the Israelites walked through the midst of the water uh, with walls on the right and the left-hand side. Exodus 14, chapter verses 21 through 22. Pharaoh's chariot and horsemen followed Israel into the divided sea at the Morning watch, the Lord looked down upon the Egyptian army through the pillars of fire and the clouds. He confused them, causing their chariots and wheels to swerve and making them drive with difficulty. That's in Exodus, the 14th chapter, verses 23 through 25. Moses stretched out his right hand, and the waters returned, drowning the pursuing Egyptian. Israel witnessed God's Israel witness. God's awesome power, mighty power, and, 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 and their fears turn to awe as they look at the miracle of Jesus, of God destroying Pharaoh's army. And they sang a triumph song of praise, celebrating, celebrating their deliverance and God's victory. You can see that in Exodus, the 26th, 14th chapter, verses 26 through 31. Now, after crossing the Red Sea, Moses and Israelites burst into song. Moses led the people in praising God for his deliverance and victory over their enemies. Look at that. Miriam, Moses' sister, took a tambourine and led the women in joyful dancing and singing. This song, known as the Song of Moses or the Song of the Sea, celebrates God's faithfulness, power, and redemption, redemption of, of his children Israel. Exodus, that's the 15th chapter, verses 1 through 21. In summary, Exodus 14, 21, and 15, 21 accounts the dramatic events of the Red Sea crossing, the defeat of Pharaoh's army, and the exorbitance and the exuberant songs of praise that follow. What a time to party. That's why the subject, time to part it. They were celebrating their victory. Jesus, God, gave them a victory over their enemies. What do you do when God gives you a victory? Do you celebrate with song? It is a time to part it. It seems a powerful reminder of God's intervention. 
When did God intervene in your life? How has he intervened in your life? How did you celebrate that interve intervention? His ability to make a way where there seemed to be none at all and the importance of victories with music and, 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 and gratitude. Music and gratitude, powerful indeed. Let's take a quick look in the insight. All right, what God is trying to tell us about this celebration and parting after God has done some for the Lord. What God is, what does God want you? He wants you to celebrate. He wants you to be joyful. God loves it when you praise his name. He loves that. That's what he wants you to do. We are here to serve him. Good morning, Miss Polly Fountain. Thank you for joining us this morning. All right, let's take a quick look at the insight. In Exodus, the 15th chapter, 20th, Miriam, Moses' oldest sister, takes up tambourines and leads the women in joyful dancing and singing at the miraculous, miraculous crossing of the Red Sea. The Israelites had just experienced a breathtaking deliverance. God parted the Red Sea, allowing them to escape from the pursuing Egyptian army. As they stepped onto the dry seabed, they witnessed the walls of the water on either side, a powerful testament of God's might and faithfulness. Miriam, a prophetess, played a central role in this celebration. Her name, which means bittersweet, reflects the hardship the Israelites endured during slavery in, in Egypt. Miriam's actions symbolize gratitude for God's deliverance. What have you done to show gratitude for what God has done for you? All right. The tamarine represents joy, victory, and praise. Do you hear the tamarines on the choir today? They are still here being tapped and sung and used for celebration of God and what God is doing in our praise of him. The women join her, celebrating the triumph over their oppressor. What are you doing to celebrate a triumph over your oppressing? Who is oppressing? It could be a bill collector. It could be whoever it is. It could be family member, whatever it is. But celebrate it when the victory is won. Their song echoes the miraculous events that they witnessed. The communion aspect is crucial. All the women participated emphasizing unity and shared experience. Dancing together fosters a sense of community look at that dancing together centered situates a a, a a sense of community reinforcing the bond among the israelites the song moses and miriam sang are holy direct response to god's intervention it magnifies his name and celebrates his victory it's not about human achievement listen it's not about human achievement now but but about God's power and faithfulness. God said he's going to take care of you, and he does. You celebrate God taking care of you. All right. The Song of the Sea is both historical and uh, typological. It points forward to great deliverance, including our redemption through Christ. Just as the Red Sea was a barrier to overcome Jesus' death, and resurrection provide our ultimate deliverance from sin. Remember we spoke earlier about we losing our way in the Garden of Eden through Adam and, Adam and Eve? Jesus Christ, God sent his son down to redeem us and reconnect us to the Father. That's where he sits now at the right hand of the Father, waiting for you to call him. What a deliverance. Jesus Christ, our Savior. Jesus Christ was our sacrificial lamb. And he saved us. And all we have to do is believe that Jesus Christ raised him from the dead. Just believe that God, Jesus' son, is the father. Whoa, what an awesome deliverance. All right. Let's take a look at the, at the exploration. What is the difference with this make in your life? What difference will a song of praise after victory over some situation or whatever, could be cancer, could be whatever it is, uh, I don't know, COVID, whatever. You know what you celebrate and what victory God has brought your way. Celebrate. What does that make? The, how does that make a difference in your life? Let's take a look at that. Here are some helpful strategies to help uh, us to understand and apply the contents of Exodus 15. 
which includes the Song of Moses and Miriam. These songs celebrate the powerful poetic story of God's deliverance of the Israelites from slavery in Egypt. Discuss the significance of the moment when the Israelites gained freedom from bondage. It's over them 400 years in, in servitude to the Egyptians. God's faithfulness and establishment of Israel as a nation. That's what a celebration that is. Note that they can reflect on the emotions conveyed in the song and encourage students to all of us to consider how the Israelites express their gratitude and awe and trust in God. How do you celebrate your gratitude and trust in God today? Discuss what the songs revealed about God's character and how they emphasize God's role as a warrior and deliverer. Remember, God's past acts of salvation is crucial for our faith today. Invite others as well as the people that you know to write down their own poetic song. What kind of poetic song have you sang to Jesus Christ for what situation he, he brought to you? Each one of you know a situation where you have called on God and God delivered you. He didn't come when you wanted, but he was already there right there at the right time to do what he, he, you wanted done. They can also reflect visual art inspired by the imaginary imagery of the song and illustrated scenes from the Red Sea crossing. Encourage everybody, encourage everybody to express gratitude for their own deliverance. Explore how trusting God in difficult situation can lead us to victory. Look at that. And consider how worship and praise play a role in our spiritual journey. Look at that. Woo, our spiritual journey. All right, let's take a look at Exodus, the 15th chapter, verses 1 through 3. All right, the 15th chapter, verses 1 through 3. If you have your Bibles, let us begin. Then sang Moses and the children of Israel, this song unto the Lord, and spake, saying, I will sing unto the Lord, I will sing unto the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and his riders has been thrown into the sea. It was talking about the Egyptian horses and soldiers and their chariots and things chasing after God's people. Oh, they were thrown in the sea. They said exactly what was happening in that song. That's another thing. When you sing songs about what God, sing about what you say, oh, he lifted me up. Oh, he paid that bill. Whatever the situation, thank you for the vehicle for travel. Whatever the, 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 the event was that, that, that God helped you with. Say it in words. All right. The Lord is my strength and my song. The Lord is my strength and my song. And he is become my salvation. He is my God, and I will prepare him in inhabitation, my Father God, and I will exalt him. Look at that. Exalt him. Raise him up. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for his salvation. I will praise him forevermore. All right. The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. They were telling and singing about who God is. A man of war is Jesus. Look at that. That's your warrior now. He sits at the right hand. All you do is call him. You can't get to God unless you go through Jesus. That's why we end with, in the in name of Jesus. That's yes, that. All right. The Lord is a warrior. The Lord is his name. All right. In Exodus 15, Worshiping the Lord marked Israel's transition into a new existence and connected their journey from Egypt to the trust-building first year in the wilderness. As a response to their trust in the Lord, Moses and the Israelites sang a song of praise to him, acknowledging, acknowledging. That's why you be singing a song of praise about what God did in your life. You acknowledging what God did for you, all right? Acknowledging that the Lord uh, accomplished their victory and attributed everything to him. Everything that you got, your breathing, every, you're waking up this morning, it's all attributed to God. God's doing it, not you. You don't have the power to do it. You don't have the power to do the things that needs to be done. 
but you do have that power through Jesus Christ and God Almighty, our Creator. The uh, first stanza of the song, verses 2 and 3, uh, also sent, uh, verses 4 and 6, focuses on, is on the Lord's deliverance of the Israelites at the sea, describing him as their strength, song, and salvation, and warrior. The Lord fought to establish his people, and he had so had and he had no army of their own. The Israelites had no army of their own, but God was their army. Look at that. He's your army today. On this September the twenty ninth morning at seven AM in the morning, God is your war and your army. Call on him. He's willing to do what he needs for you. All right. Fellows chariots army got drowned in the Red Sea. Oh, look at that. And all the officers of women, just, God just wiped them out. The stanzas of the song revolves around bringing honor, bringing honor to the Lord and concludes with praise addressed directly to him. Look at that. As we reflect on the Israelites' journey and their song of praise, we can inspire to in the Lord and give him the credit for our victory. Just as the Lord fought for the Israelites, he also fighting for us. Look at that. Just as God fought for the Israelites, he's fighting for you and I right now. Whatever your situation is, whatever you're going through, give it to God. He will take care of it. Give it to him and be faithful in difficult times as well as a good time. He also fighting for us and bringing us through our own trials and challenges. One of the brothers said yesterday, we all had our Red Sea situations in our life, and you know what they are. You have come to your Red Sea as well in your life, just like I have. Let us take a moment to acknowledge his greatness and give him the honor and praise he deserves. Just for a minute. Think about what God has done for you. And how many times he has blessed you to bring you where you are on this Sunday morning, 2024. Regardless of your age and the situation, look what he's done. Think about it. Awesome. All right. Let's go on. An adult question for you. What decision can we make to intentionally express gratitude to God? His mighty acts in our lives. And I've said this and I'll say it again. Continue to praise God in all of your life. And everything that you do. Good, bad, or ugly. It does not matter. You continue to hold on and praise God for what he's doing for you. He does so many things you can't number them. Thank him. Praise him for it. Thank you, Jesus. Look at that. Thank you, Jesus. Three words. Thank you, Jesus. That's all you say. All right. Another question for the young people. How can we cultivate wholehearted worship in our lives, especially during challenging times? Faith and trust in God. Faith and trust in God. That's the answer, brothers and sisters. That's how you do it. Faith and trust in God. All right. Let's go to the next outline. This comes from Exodus, the 15th chapter, verses, 13, or, or, or verses 11 through 13, as you turn there. All right. Good morning, Mr. Robinson. Thank you for joining us. This is Charles Robinson. That's my first time um, witnessing you on the, on the school lesson. Thank you. Um, all right. Let's go with uh, Exodus, the 15th chapter, verses 11 through 13. All right. Here we go. Who is like unto thee? Look at that. They're asking the question. Who? Who is like unto God? Jesus. Who? 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 Nobody. Nobody. O oh Lord, among the gods, who is like thee, glorious in holiness, fearful in praise, doing wonders? Look at God. The miracle maker. The promise keeper. Look at that. Who? Talking about God. Jesus. They are stretched out hands, and earth swallowed them. In other words, 
They were praising God for how they threw them soldiers and the, the, drowned them in the Red Sea. Look at that. God can drown your enemies too. On land or wherever they are. Just call them. Let them know who you are. I'm thinking about when I was in, 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 in working for the state. Oh, what an awesome situation I was in. And I called on God and he delivered. Look at that. All right. I'm still thankful for that. I gave that experience uh, to somebody yesterday about uh, how God can pull you through in regards to what the situation is. Whether it be finance, whatever it is, God can do it. God can actually do it. Those stretched out their right hand and the earth swallowed them up. He was talking about how Moses had raised his hand to power to see. God told him what to do. And God told him and, and, and brought them waters back together. He used Moses. And he can use you and I as well. Let God use you in somebody's Red Sea life. Let God use you to be a bridge across some troubled waters in somebody's life. Let God use you in helping and in encouraging somebody else. All right. Let's look at the next, uh, the 13th verse. That was verse 11 and 12. And the 13th verse says that, that uh, thou in thy mercy has led forth the people which thou has redeemed. He's talking about his people through Though he has guided them in thy strength unto a holy habitation. He's talking about the promised land, where they're going. They haven't got that, but they're out in the wilderness and that. But they led them out of Egypt and through the Red Sea. They're on the other side of the Red Sea now. Now they are in the midst of the, of, of, of the, of the desert and the wilderness, in which they are going to bring them through. They're going to go through some trials and tribulations there as well. And here's the thing about that. When God delivers you from whatever you're in, there is still things to do. He's working out the character of you. He's working out your soul salvation. In other words, all the things that you incur in life is preparing you for that day when God call you home. He's going to call you when you get ready. He's not going to call you before you're ready. He is molding you and fixing you and putting you into a condition that you are a good and faithful servant. That's what life trials and tribulations are about. They're preparing you. You go through difficult situations to get you ready for another situation. All right. All right. And the question was asked by the children uh, of, 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 uh, of, of God. Who is among the gods that like you? Who is like God? And in other words, you stretched out your hand and the earth swallowed your enemies. Look at that. Who can do that? In your unfailing love. That's how much he loves you. He loves you conditionally. It does. He have, he have put no gift. And you remember the passage about who can separate you from the love of God? Nobody. Nobody. Think about that. What an awesome God. In your unfailing love, you will lead the people you have redeemed. Are you redeemed? Yes, sir, I am. In your strength, you will guide them in your holy dwelling. All right, let's go on. Verses 9 and 10 describes how the enemy was very proud of their abilities and boasted in six different ways. Your enemies boast about things about how you're doing, but God got it all. They can't do nothing to you. God's got you. Listen to this. They were confident in pursuing. The enemy's going to pursue you. He may even overtake you. He may divide you, remember, in the house or in your home, you can become division in the house, husband and wife, children and, 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 and mom and dad. They, they can divide to split you up. You're talking about the enemy now. We're talking about that. what God, the enemies can do to you, all right? They can gorge you. They can uh, draw in, uh, their swords, saying they can have their weapon ready to destroy you and, and destroy them. In other words, all the things that the enemy can do, God's got all of it. He's got all of it. I will draw my sword was a way of saying that the enemy planned to kill every one of God's folks out there on, on, on that journey to, to, to the promised land. The narrative ends by saying that the enemy sank like lead. You know how you go fishing and you throw that reel in there and that hook go down in that water with that lead on it, taking it down to, the, to catch the fish? They went down like lead in that water. 
verse 11, the worship praise the Lord by asking a question that you third phrase of expressing that gratitude and wonderful deliverance that experienced it. In other words, who is like our God? Nobody. Look at that. The final standard starts the way, the very way the previous one was, with a statement of faith and Lord's deliverance, both past and future. You can see that in verses 12 and 13. Look at that. Thou stretched out the hand and they swallowed him up. Look at that. And 13 says, Thou that that they may mercy had lead forth the people out of that that they have been redeemed. God guided them. Oh, what a place. God guided them to a safe place. Look at that. The first line backs while the second and third look forward. Look at they're looking back at what God had done. The next one lead them to where God is gonna be taking them. That's, that's exactly the same thing in your life today. The song you sang about what God did for you. And you sang about where God's going to take you. Look at that. Look at that. They're faithful in their hope for future deliverance and their praise for the previous victory. Faith has faith was created in the midst of people singing. This passage reminds us to turn to God for help and deliverance in tough times. Turn to God for help and deliverance in tough times. Do we need to say that again? Turn to God for deliverance in tough times. These are tough times. And brother and sister, tougher times are coming. That's why you're going through what you're going through now. He's getting you ready for the next phase. But you prank him, praise him and thank him for what he has done already. Hold on to faith. Reflect on past victories. Hold on to faith. Reflect on past victories. Look forward with hope and trust. He will work wonders. He will work wonders in our lives. He will work wonders in our lives. Remember that today. All right. Explore the impact of praising God and how does it shape our perspective, strength, and our faith and draw us closer to him. Think about what God has done for you. How does it draw you closer to God? How does it remind you of what he's done for you? I'm reminded of this week, past week preparation for the revival. I had a tough time. God knows what I went through and I know what I went through. My slipping and falling and getting back up. Even today. It's a battle when I be by every day. But God is right there. His grace is sufficient. If you believe you got a thorn in your side, it's there for a reason. Think about it. Whatever it is that's dogging your life, but you still keep holding on to God's unchanging hand. I don't care what it is. You keep holding on. God will bring you out when you, when he know you ready to go forward. All right, what, as, what aspects of God's holiness and glory stands out to you in this passage? What, 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 what stands out about in the passage that they are singing here? What stands out in your unfailing love? In other words, the love that will not fail. Human beings will fail you, you know, but not Jesus, not God. They, he won't fail you. What does that remind you of? He woke you up this morning. I use in simple phrase terms that we're familiar with. It's just that I need you to understand that God is still in control, no matter what it is. Good morning, Miss Liddell. Thank you for being with us this morning. All right. Now let's go to Exodus, the 15th chapter, verses 17 through 18 and 20 and 21. All right. And the verse 17 says now, if you are there, Exodus the 15th chapter, verse 17 through 18, and we're going to be doing 20 and 21. These are the two uh, final outlines for today's lesson. Thou shalt bring them in and plant them in the mountains of their inhabitants. He's talking about the children of Israel, where God going to put them. They still got to go through that desert. That's a whole story in itself. 
but they got to go through that desert and some things got to take place. Some people not going to make it into the promised land. Even Moses is not going to make it into the promised land. Look at that. God going to take him to the mountaintop and let him look over and see the promised land, but God is not going to let him in. Certain people are not going to get there. Complainers, grumblers. And what are, are you a complainer and grumbler and, and you're never satisfied? God don't like that. Those kind of people didn't make it into the promised land. That's a story in itself. It's, we're going to be covenant, but that's a story in itself for us in our life. Are you complaining and grumbling all the time? Stop it right now on this 29th day of September of 2024. All right. Thou shalt bring them into a plant them in a mountain of their inheritance in the place. What is an inheritance? Something that somebody laid aside and set aside for you that you inherited. Something that your father or your mother you're speaking of something that you inherited. You know about that is. All right. What that is. O Lord, which thou hast made for thee to dwell in, in the sanctuary, O Lord, which thy hands have established. In other words, God made it. You inherited some land. You got some land. God did it for you. Don't think you did. Not the lawyer, but God. All right. The Lord shall reign forever and ever. Look at that. God is going away now and prepare a place for you. And where I will be there, you'll be also. He's told you he's going away to prepare a place for you. He's working out a place for you right now. You're working out your soul salvation right here now on earth. It's how you treat each other. How you reward for what lessons that you learn and how God has blessed you. How do you, what do you do? Who do you support? Who do you call on when you're in trouble? Call on Jesus. All right, let's look at verse number 20. And Miriam the prophet, sister of Aaron, took a timbrel in her hand, and all the women went out with her with timbrels and with dancing. Oh, what a sight that was. Dancing in the street. You remember David danced in, 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 in the street until his clothes come off. What a what a joy of a celebration. It had some a lady looking on him and she was mocking him for doing that. But don't you worry about that. You praise God however way you can. God is absolutely good. He is absolutely good. Yes, he is. All right. And Mary answered them, saying you to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider have been thrown in the sea. Your trials and tribulation that your Red Sea, God can throw them into the sea as well. Stay faithful with God. Mary sang to them, sing to the Lord. Sing to the Lord, for he is highly exalted. Both horses and driver has been buried in the sea. Look at that. God can take care of your enemies. He can do it. All right, let's move on. Verse 17 of Exodus 15 talks about God, uh, God promised to bring his people to a special place known as the mountain of his inheritance. This place is established by God and a sanctuary where he resides there. This was symbolized both the heavenly and earthly dwelling place of God, such as Solomon's temple. Y'all remember the situation how God, Moses went up there and to get information and things like that and and, and, and the folks were afraid and the, how the flame and fire from the mountains. And when Moses came down, his face was expressed with radiant for being in the presence of God. They were afraid of the awesome power of God. That's the mountain that they are talking about now. The holy place about where God is. All right. It can be seen as a foreshadowing of the church, a community of the believers. And where is that church? It's in our heart. It's in our heart, the Holy Spirit, the love of Christ, compassion, fruits of the Spirit. There is no law against the thing. There is no law against you loving somebody and caring somebody. There is no law against it and nothing to be done about it. God brings and plants people in the church like a mountain, firm, unshakable, and established for him. In the Old Testament, in the Old Testament, the temple for God in place for now believers in God's temple. First Corinthians, the third chapter, verse 16. We are individuals and collectively are his sanctuary. It points toward our eternal inheritance in heaven, Jerusalem, Hebrews 12 and 22. 
God established our place there and will dwell with him and we will dwell with him forever. And verses 18 through 21 continues the theme of praise and anticipation of God's future blessing. This song describes God's reign as the king forever. Look at that. The nations will hear of his mighty deeds and tremble. The Lord will lead the people to the promised land and they will inhabit it. We recognize God's eternal reign and sovereignty. Here's the thing about this. Out of all the stuff that's going on in the world today, I mentioned it last week's lesson. God is sovereign over every nation in the world. They may think they run it, but God is running things. He's allowing Satan to do whatever he is doing in the world today. All these shooting and killing and murder and all this stuff that's going to war over in, 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 in Israel, different, all that stuff going. Satan is doing that through human beings. He's using them. And God is allowing that stuff to take place. But God is still in control. He is sovereign over everything in this world. He knows about your situation, what you're going through. He knows everything. Go to him. Call on him. Praise him. Ask him for help. He is there for you. He is your savior. He is your sacrificial lamb. We recognize God's eternal reign and sovereignty. He is the king of kings, ruler over all nations and generations. Look at that. Isn't that awesome? Yes, it is. We witness his salvation and power as the church and our lives should proclaim God mighty deed. Forget about the building. You are the sanctuary. You are his holy temple. Think about it. If you fall down, get back up. God will lead us there. He will dwell with him and with forever and in, 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 in an inhabitants where God is. It's in a heavenly realm. Stay with Jesus Christ. It's going to be tough, but you can make it. All right. God will lead you there. He will dwell with him there. In Exodus 15, chapter verses 17 through 21, invites us to celebrate God's deliverance. Recognize his dwelling place and anticipate our eternal inheritance with him there in heaven. Look at that. We're thinking about, we're thinking out of the world now. And we party singing in it. Thank you, Jesus. For one day, for one day, his dwelling place and anticipates our eternal inheritance. May, may we, like Moses, praise the mighty for his faithfulness and grace. Praise God for his faithfulness and love for us. Unfailing love. All right, here's a question for you. In what ways can you be a living sanctuary for God? How can, you, how can your life reflect his holiness? You can reflect his holiness about how you live. You can reflect God's holiness in how you live. Walk by faith. Put everything in the hands of Jesus Christ. Thank God when you first get up in the morning. I'm reminded when I wake up in the morning and I turn to the side and before my feet hit, I've said, thank you, Jesus. Jesus. For when I laid in slumber and snow and interrupted breathing through the night. Thank you, Jesus. I'm alive to see the sun come up again before my feet hit the floor. How about you? And guess what? After all of that, Satan's still coming after you. Satan's still going to put things in your way. Satan's still going thoughts coming into your mind. But you must study to renew your mind to battle those things, to know that trouble won't last always. Trouble won't last always. All right. How can we celebrate God's victories and share our joy with others? Through songs. 
What are we be talking about? Go to songs and read them. Speak them out loud. Say them. Yea, though I walk through the valleys of the shadow of death, and I will fear no evil. Look at that. Look at it. Sing it. Praise him. All right. Okay. Recall moments when God delivered you from challenges, fears, and bondages. Think about when God delivered you from challenges and forces in this life here. Think about it and pray about it and how God delivered you. Celebrate those victories. Give God the glory. Remember his faithfulness. Said he's going to bring you through, and he did. Yes, he did. All right. The Lord reigns forever. God reigns forever. Yes, he does. Our world leaders come and go. Look at them, God. They coming and going, different ones. But God's still on the throne and still reigning and in control. Our world leaders come and go. I repeat that now. But his sovereign remain. He's still in control of. Don't be thinking of Putin about uh, 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 whoever the leader is that you're thinking about. Don't worry about that. Don't worry about who is going to be president. God already knows who's going to be president of this nation. He's going to work through you. He's going to work through you. And whatever, whoever is, is, is set up as president, God is still in control. God still got you. Don't let it tear you up. God's got it. His friend remains. Let's pray for wise leaders. Pray for a wise leader who honors God's principles and seek justice for all. There is your cue. For this president's election. Look at that. Leaders who honor God's principles. And seek justice for all. That's who you vote for. And let God handle the rest. Call on God. And he'll handle the rest. All right. Reflect on the moments when God did you from challenges, fears, of bondage. Let those victories fill you with gratitude, inspire you to keep moving forward in faith. Remember his unfailing love and faithfulness and trust he will continue to guide and protect you in all areas of your life. All areas of your life. Let us find comfort in the eternal sovereignty of the Lord. He is over everything, God. Yes, he is. Let him lead you. Let him lead you. Let him use you. He will continue to guide and protect you in all areas of your life. I've said it again. All right. Now, let's take a quick look at next week's lesson. All right. Let's, let's cover this first. God's unwavering presence remains. May we be inspired to pray for leaders who pass the wisdom to follow God's principles and seek justice for all. You pray for that type of leader, and God will give you that leader. For all so that the world may be filled with peace and love and harmony. That's how you need to get peace and harmony. All this stuff that's going on in the world. Guess what? You know how you people are talking about the price of this and the price of that. And that has nothing to do with no president or who's president. Get that out of mind. There'll be good times and bad times in all types of situations. It does not matter what's going on. God is in control. Ain't no man controlling nothing. God is. Keep your eyes on the right prize, on the right focus. Don't get all caught up in all this garbage that's going on on the television and different places like that. Keep your trust in God. All right. The topic for Sunday, October the 6th, 24, is regret and remorse. The devotional reading will come out of 2 Corinthians, the 7th chapter, verses 5 through 11. The background script is going to come out of Psalm 51. Uh, it's all going to come out of 2 Samuel 11, and the printed text is, is Psalm 
51 verses 1 through 4, Psalms 10, uh, stanzas 10 through 12, and stanzas 15 through 17. It's going to come out of Psalm 51 now. That's for next week's lesson. All right, now here's your guide for the week. All right, Monday, September the 30th, do not persist in sin. That's Hebrews, the 10th chapter, 26th through the 35th verse. Do not persist in sin. In other words, don't keep doing it. Don't stop it. Tuesday, October the 1st, godly grief leads to repentance. Godly grief leads to repentance. You did something wrong? Repent. Grieve over it. Godly repentance and grieving. I ain't talking about fake stuff. Real. That'll be 2 Corinthians, this, the 7th chapter, verses 5 through 11. Wednesday, October 2nd. The righteous and the wicked. There are two types of people in the world. The righteous and the wicked. There are good and evil people in this world. Now that is the truth. Be aware of it and know that. Don't be burying your head in the sand. Proverbs, the 28th chapter, verses 4 through 18. Then on Thursday, October the 3rd, sin, deadly spiral. It will lead you to death. The wedges of sin is what? Death. It's going to happen. Because God's word says so. The wedges of sin is death. It may not happen today, but it's a gradual process. You will die from committing sin. The wages, in other words, to pay for it, is death. And you don't have to go that way. You can find that in 2 Samuel 11, chapter, verses 1 through 5, and verses 15, 14 through 24. Then on Friday, October 4, God restores us. Who restores us? He leads me beside the still water. He restores my soul. God's word. God restores us. That's in Lamentations, the fifth chapter, verses 1 through 3, and verses 15 through 22. Now let's take a look at Saturday, October the Follow Christ. Follow Jesus, our Savior, the sacrificial lamb. He died for you. And when you close your prayer, you what do you say? In the name of Jesus. Because God will not hear you, but he heals you through, he heals you through his son, Jesus Christ. That's why he sits at the right hand of the Father, waiting to hear you call on him. Follow Christ. That'll be in John, the 21st chapter, verse 15 through 19. Then on Sunday, October the 6th, next Sunday, God willing, create in me a clean heart. You're asking God to create in you a clean heart. That's in spite of all the stuff that you did in the past. You asking God to create in you a clean heart. And that's in Psalms, the 15th chapter, verses 1 through 13 and, 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 and uh, 16 through 17. Psalms 51. All right. I'll close in prayer. Uh, before I give the closing prayer, there's a song that I, that I wrote. It's called Singing God's Praise. It's all over the internet. I recorded 10 or 15 years ago in this studio that you listening to me and hearing in the back and on the instruments you see right back there behind me. I wrote this song 10 or 12 years ago on the very equipment right there. But here's the thing about that song. I wrote that song and that song is about 45 minutes long with all types of instruments being played by me in praise of what God had did for me. I'm going to leave that link on this Sunday school lesson to that song. And here's what I want you to do. When you have time, listen to that song about what I wrote about how God had did in my life. I will praise thee even though thou art angry with me. He's angry with you about the sins that you have committed. He's angry about what you doing wrong in this life. He's angry about you completely, slowly slipping down to death through sin. God don't like you. 
He wants everybody to be saved. Okay? Let's do our closing prayer. Lord, help us to recognize your supremacy in a world filled with distractions and false idols. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. On behalf of all of us here at House Sea Production Gospel, Blog Talk Radio, we thank you. Let's leave you with a comment. God bless you all. And God willing, I'll see you next Sunday. Not my will, but God's will. It be up to God that I be here. Same thing that you, you be here to hear me or see me. It's up to God. You. That's why I use the term, God willing. God bless you all. Take care now. We'll see you next Sunday. Let's go ahead and... Uh,